we're going to go over surface currents. This is going to be chapter 16, section 1, for reference of your book. Wind is the main cause of the surface movement. Now we are going to look at two different kinds of movement. We're going to look at surface and we are going to look at the deep ocean circulation as well. It's basically just a friction that moves the water and because the earth is spinning we get what is called the Coriolis effect. And the Coriolis effect is just the fact that our ocean currents and our wind systems don't just move straight north to south in directions, they actually curve in different directions. And so because of that, we see the movement of our ocean in a clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere, and we see it in a counterclockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. The Coriolis effect is also going to affect our wind systems, and it's actually the wind systems that's pushing the surface of the water that's causing the movement of those surface currents. So that's why we have to look at both here. Along the equator, we have what are called the doldrums. This means there is no wind in these locations. Just north of the equator and south of the equator, we have what are called the trade winds. North of the equator, they move from the east towards the west and south. And south of the equator, they move from the east towards the west, towards the north direction. Just north of that, we have what are called the westerlies. These are what affects our weather. And the reason they're called the westerlies is because they come from the west and they move east. From the west and they move east. Okay. Same thing in the southern hemisphere. They're also called the westerlies. They move from the west towards the east, but they move away from the equator towards the poles, just like ours do up here, moving towards the poles, towards the poles here. So again, west to east towards the poles in the southern hemisphere. Then we get what are called the polar easterlies. They're called the easterlies because they come from the east. So they come from the east and go in a west direction. Same with down here in the southern hemisphere. You will have to label these on the map. The easiest way to remember these is that the northern hemisphere is a mirror reflection of the southern hemisphere. So if you remember the trade winds going from the east to the west towards the equator, you remember our westerlies and the easterlies here. You can simply take your paper and actually fold it down and in half and then just look through and draw these on top and you would get this. It's a mirror image of one another. So these large circular loops of water movement on the surface are called gyres. Okay. A gyre is simply a large loop of major connected currents in an ocean basin. So this is what we're doing with our activity in class. There are four main gyres, so you separate your cards into four piles. We have the North Atlantic here, we have the South Atlantic here, and then there is also the North Pacific and the South Pacific. So again, they usually span about 20 to 30 degrees in latitude. We're going to see that as we draw them on our map. And then, of course, we need to remember the direction that the guy are spinning. In the Northern Hemisphere, we're going to go clockwise. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're going to go counterclockwise. So here's an overall map of what these surface circulations look like. You can see that there are pretty much four currents that make up each main gyre. I'm labeling them here in the North Pacific. Those four currents, you've got one at the equator, you've got one along the west coast of the basin, you've got one along the north side of the basin, and then you've got one along the east side of the basin. That holds true for all five gyres. There are actually five gyres. We only do four with the activity in class because we're going to leave this one open for you to try to figure out on your own. So in the South Pacific, again, there are four currents that make up the gyre. One, two, three, four. And you can see them labeled one, two, three, 
4. So this one you can see is going in that counterclockwise direction. Finally, we also get vertical circulation, and we've already taken a look at this. The vertical circulation occurs because of those temperature changes and because of the salinity changes. And we've talked about the thermocline and the halocline being those steep changes in temperature that we've seen in our graphs already. So this is what causes water from the surface to sink down to the bottom and water from the bottom of the ocean to rise up towards the top of the ocean. This vertical circulation, so going from the surface down and from the bottom up, is going to be called thermohaline circulation. You can see therm, one of the reasons is due to temperature, Haline is the mineral name for salt, so the second reason being because of the salinity. And we already know that as temperature changes, density changes, as salinity changes, density changes, and it's really the density changes from those temperature and salinity that's going to cause that movement. It is um, a very slow movement, but it's still very important. The reason that it's very important is because we need to bring nutrients that are sinking down to the very bottom of the ocean back up to the surface. And so we get very cold, dense water sinking down towards the bottom of the ocean. And all of the dead, decomposing organisms are sinking down. Well, all those nutrients build up right at the bottom of the ocean. And we need to bring those nutrients back up to the surface in order to allow the phytoplankton to use those nutrients during photosynthesis. And so we get a process that's called upwelling, and that's part of that vertical circulation. Is the waters get real cold and the salt, and then they start to um, lose some of that saltiness, and so it rises back up.